musician and of the animal friend who saves his life. Oh, oh, this location filming is vastly overrated. Now, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Grind, grind, grind. We're in deepest Cornwall. And we got a great little railway for you this morning. Surprises, I promise. So it sounds intriguing. Ah! How's that for timing? Admittedly, it took seven takes to get it, but it takes a long time to turn around a 120 ton steam locomotive. Our erstwhile hostess, Mrs. Harrison, had the trees cleared at the end of the garden, so you could get a clear view of the swift shore as she pulls the milk train up the gradient. That's uh, the swift shore, of course, not, not Mrs. Harrison. You wouldn't catch her pulling a milk train up a gradient. <laughs> Late. Hello there. Now, let's see what we got for you today. Aha, uh -huh, Bodmin and Wentford Railway. Not bad. It's a bit sombre, but Bodmin was a big noise in the old days. It used to be capital city of Cornwall. Let's see, Bodmin. Bodmin, 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 the town that told the mighty Great Western Railway where to stick their line. So, in fact, the main Bodmin station is about three miles out of town. Brilliant. Uh, you know, it took an hour to drive to the station in the 1840s version of the hatchback to pick up the old man after work. So they had to build their own branch line here. And this once was Bodmin General. Now, where are we on the map? Let's have a look. Ah, Bodmin General, Coal Slugged Halt, and Bodmin Parkway. I like the sound of them already. They sound like old actors. So cool, Sluggit Holt will be giving his king Lear at the old Alhambra Bodmin. It does have a certain tombra, doesn't it? Anyway, I have to get a move on because I have to catch the 11.30 and meet a certain Mr. Morris, who apparently has a surprise for me, according to my landlady. Something about a camel. Camels in Bodmin, I find that very, very unlikely. <laughs> Class return to Bodmin Parkway, please. As I say, it's only three miles, but who wants to be a party pooper? Thank you very much. You're not, um, you're not Mr. Morris, are you, my dear? Camels. <laughs> Have you seen Mr. Morris? No, sir. You try the local shed. I don't know if you have. I've seen Silas Lambs twice. With the lights out. Morris? Is that you, Morris? Hello? <coughs> Excuse me, are, are you Morris? No, sir. Who, who are you? My name is Brian. Oh. How do you do, sir? And, and, and what are you doing here? This is huge. It is. It's quite a large machine. All 112 tons of it when it's all together. What is it? It's a Great Western freight locomotive built in 1938. And, uh... It's a year younger than me. Is that right? I'm uh, in worse condition than this. That's Where sure. are all the bits? Is it supposed to be missing? Right? Well, they're all stored away for safekeeping. Yeah. We can't leave things lying around. We have all the parts except the main... the main rods. When, we, when do you reckon it'll be finished, then? Projected three and a half years from now. For the millennium? Oh. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I heard that. That would be the 11.30 to Cole Sluggit Halt. It calls me. Right, sir. Morris and the camel. Thank you, Brad. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Catching the 803 every morning and 
standing all the way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Don't you love it? Oh, toot, toot! Time is not far off when we shall be able to take our coffee and write while going along noiselessly and smoothly at 45 miles an hour. So said Isambard King de Brunel around 1833. I'm beginning to like this chap. He certainly would be someone to add to the dinner invitations. You're late, Isambard. You have trouble parking? Oh, cones all up the A38. Oh, I know that. Tell me, what was it like building the Tamar Bridge? It must be an absolute pig, wasn't it? More gin. Morris. Oh, yeah. We're all ready for the trip, <coughs> aren't we? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, anybody here, Morris? Morris? Mor Mor Oh, that's me, yeah. Morris! Yeah. My heavens! Sure, a bit of a rogue and a hard man to meet, I guess. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are these two going to do when they grow up? Look. Well, they're playing trains now, so I expect oh, they no. still will, Pathetic, yeah. isn't it, their age? Uh, uh, can you tell me, you have a camel for me, I gather? A camel? Yes. Oh, we've got a camel, yes, yes. All oh, right, lead me yeah. to it. Oh, well, it's up on the other end, you know. Ah, an unexpected surprise. The Cornish Riviera Express from Paddington to Penzance. No doubt desperate to whisk her impatient passengers off with a buzz and a whir ever westwards. Should show her better some respect, in my humble opinion. Too late. She's off. No time. Got to dash. Anyway, enough of this. Apparently, I've got to go all the way back up the line to find this evasive camel. Morris certainly knows how to keep a chap on tinterhooks. Ah! I'd like to introduce you to Peter Fitzgerald here, who has the signal honour of having a siding named after him. Fitzgerald's Siding, it will be called, quite rightly, in the circumstances. I'm not quite sure it's quite as distinguished having a pub named after you, but it's very good to have a siding named after you. And he's also, and this is the dangerous part, financial director of this wonderful railway. Now, when our director came to see you, Apparently he said, oh no, he's very busy at the moment, he's at a very important meeting, God knows what happened. And then it, it was slipped through, it was about the railway, so you're out like a shot, saying, what can I tell you, what can I do? You, you know, so you are an enthusiast? I have to say, I probably am, yes. Yeah. I've always had an interest in railways, from the time of living next to a railway embankment at the age of two, to being allowed to walk through the woods at the age of five to go and see the railways. That was in the days before you liked to get mugged on the way to anywhere. Put a date on it, just so we know what, what was happening. Well, that would be about the... Um, like 1952, yeah, 1955. Yeah. Still steam and still, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, very yeah. definitely. Um, that interest then went on to model railways. And uh, in fact, it wasn't until 1959 that I discovered there were people around who used to underline things in books to indicate they'd actually seen trains. That was actually something new to me. I just used to watch them, just so I used to watch aeroplanes and used to watch ships. Very interesting. Did you actually collect the numbers? You no, I never did, just actually. Just the, the names? No, Wait, no, I just used to notice them. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, you're an HOO man, I mean, a, a model railway man. Model railways were yeah. um, very much of an interest, and later on with the electronics, they became even more interesting. Yeah. There's a charming picture in your brochure, Peter. Uh, it says, Swiftshaw passing Charlie's Gate. Yeah, Bogwin Park. Uh, it's sort of coming up, I think, now, I think. Why is it called Charlie's Gate? Well, that gate there was used by the royal family, and in particular, Charlie, Oh, Prince Charlie. Prince after, Charles, after, yeah. Prince and Lady Diana. It's the famous siding. It's a very famous siding because royal trains, when they go to any part of the country, need a very quiet place for them to carry on sleeping. Unlike you or I, who have to suffer with sleeping trains, which yes. carry on riding, yes. the air trains are allowed to come to a stop. And before we owned the line, they used to bring the train up here, before the freight was running, you know, the freight of the day, and it would quietly stable here. And in the morning, uh, sometimes even on wet mornings, the Queen, I'm told, had to don her Wellingtons to walk up the last bit of the track to exit through that gate onto a car, Range Rover, whatever. 
But you didn't get a name attached to it, only Charlie. Only Charlie for some reason, I don't know why. I can't help noticing, as we've just come through, the shortest tunnel I think I've ever been through, the dear old Swift Show is having a bit of trouble on, on, on the climb. It's slowed down considerably and is grunting mildly. Another short, oh, even shorter. Well, we have to be careful. You can't go full pelt at it because we started from Bodmin Parkway and it's on a bend and it's starting from scratch and it goes into a very steep gradient, about 1 in 37, which for a car is quite adequate, but for a train is quite difficult. Um, we've got a lot of wood around here, so if they open the regulator or throttle too much and too many coals go out of the chimney, we could have a problem with a fire. So we just take it steadily up this point. Forget about the fire risk, don't they? Yes, it, of steam engines. There was a slight one, wasn't there? <laughs> and it says in your brochure here, as you climb the steep gradient, watch out for the wildlife and flora which flourish close to the tracks. Yeah. So they wouldn't like it. Ah, ah, ah. Mrs. Harrison's. All right, let's see. She took all these trees down so she could look at us. <laughs> The finest sausages, I think, possibly in the Bodmin area. She's been a, been a great supporter of the railway. She, does, she loves it. It's a bit comfort, she says, having it going past every bit. Yes. That's rather a handsome looking building over there. Well, what's that then? The one with the tall chimney? Yeah. Yes, well, actually, it's the local crematorium. Oh, right. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, it is actually a very fine print crematorium. And it's rather nice to be in there, um, you know, as a friend or loved one who's just deceased, to actually see the train passing. You just see the smoke yeah. at the edge of the field. It's uh, slightly different. I, I gather Swift Shore itself has actually uh, taken part in the cremation. Yes, one enthusiast decided he would like his ashes spread along the permanent way. So in the course of a journey, uh, they scattered his ashes, dust to dust, along the permanent way. Are you contemplating this yourself or, or uh, over the HO? Until, until you mention <laughs> it, I hadn't actually given it any thought. <laughs> Oh, this is it, then. We are now passing the famous siding. It's an old siding. I'm afraid so. Now, you employ that well, more than anybody else in, in Cornwall, they say, you Well, we're, I think we're about fourth place after china clay, pasties, and conversion of pork into pigs. Okay. <laughs> That's what's the impression. I suppose this is Morris's idea of a joke. Certainly the most bizarre camel that I've ever ridden. Have you ever ridden a camel? Anyway, au revoir. Very good luck to you, Peter, for the next bit. Thank you.